Hey guys, in this week's video, we're going to be looking at the top 10 worst white guys ever made. This video has been a long time in the making, and I'm sure that number four is really going to shock you. Without further ado, let's jump into the top 10 worst white guys ever made. Number 10, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt should not be playing Mario in the Mario movie. Number 1, Willem Dafoe. He is very scary and white. And that was my list of the top 10 worst white guys ever made. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. What are your top 10 worst white guys ever made? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. And be sure to tune in next time when we look at the top 10 worst white women ever made. Hope to see you guys then. Have a good day. That was a joke, we're playing Spider-Man today. The Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies are some of the most beloved superhero movies of all time. The creative vision of Mr. Raimi is perfectly flawless and great. These movies have aged so well, and there is nothing bad about them whatsoever. In all seriousness, I love these movies. I remember getting the first one on VHS tape from the library, and yes, I am very, very old. My favorite of the trilogy growing up was 3, which is still widely regarded as objectively the best one, do not question me. Anyways, I've always been a big fan of movie tie-in games as well. Ever since I got a bootlegged copy of Toy Story 2 The Action Game, from our next door neighbor, I've enjoyed playing through moments from some of my favorite movies of all time. Like... I remember the magical Christmas morning when my brother Mr. Jephtha got Spider-Man the movie the game. I still remember the first time I laid eyes on that incredible intro cutscene. I played this game all the time when I was younger and remember really enjoying it, so it's probably aged very well. Let's check it out. Before we get started, let me offer you a brief introduction to who Spider-Man is for those of you who may not know anything about our favorite wall-crawling superhero. Spider-Man is a guy who eats spiders. I don't know, I didn't read the comics. Um. Let me go peek at the Wikipedia page real quick. The story goes that Peter Parker was a dumb, nerdy kid who was bitten by a radioactive spider. Genetically designed super spiders. Or maybe it was a genetically engineered spider? Maybe it was both? This is the first time I've ever read the Wikipedia article for Spider-Man, so don't expect too much from me, okay? Don't look at my shirt anymore. After the bite of 87, old Petey got himself some spider-themed powers, including muscle weakness resulting in an inability to move. Wait, no, that's polio. Thanks to the spider bite, Peter could climb walls and have super strength. And in the case of the Raimi Spider-Man movies, he could shoot webbing out of his hands. Ew. Now that you know who Spider-Man is, let's play as Spider-Man in Spider-Man. Woo! Let's start by taking a look at the tutorial. It's been ages since I touched this game, so I want to make sure I know how to play it. The tutorial takes place in The Matrix. There's a snarky and rude narrator played by Bruce Campbell, who is most well known for his iconic role as Pizza Ball Guy in Doctor Strange and the Multitude of Mentalness. <laughs> Bruce has appeared in most of Sam Raimi's movies, so it's a no-brainer that he'd have a fun cameo in this game. But he is very, very mean and degrading, and he makes me feel sad. Well, you're easily <laughs> impressed, aren't you? Unplug the machine. Uh, hey, King of the World. Don't let it go to your head, okay? Duh. Good luck. Need it. Unplug oh, the machine. The tutorial isn't very helpful. Campbell's Chunky Soup told me to push the web swing key to swing, but I don't know what the web swing button is. So now I gotta go look it up in the manual, and wouldn't you know it, the web swing button is... The number eight. I think the reason Campbell Cream of Chicken Soup isn't telling me exactly which button to push has to do with this being the PC version of the game. I went and watched the tutorial for the PS2 version, and wouldn't you know it, he says exactly which button to push for which action. Press the right trigger button to start web swinging. I feel kind of discriminated against for not having a PS2. Thanks, Sony. Well, the tutorial glitched out and wouldn't let me progress, so I guess it's time to start the actual game. The opening cutscene tells the story of Spider-Man, how he used his cool spider powers selfishly to make a quick buck instead of using them for good. He doesn't get paid for the wrestling match, so he very selfishly lets a thug run past when he could have clearly stopped him. Peter then finds Uncle Ben very not alive, which makes Peter very sad. Now, Spider-Man must hunt down the criminal responsible for his uncle's death, and that's where we finally get to the first level. I've gotta say, this opening cutscene is pretty faithful and accurate to the plot of the movie, and it's pretty much the only part of the game that is faithful and accurate to the plot of the movie. The first level isn't half bad. You have to track down some criminals to find out where the murderer is hiding, and wait a minute. Uh, what are Spider-Man's webs hanging on to? He's just kinda swinging webs up into the sky, but there's there's nothing up there for the, for the webs to grab. Maybe it's Uncle Bill up in heaven holding the webs for him. I found a woman stuck on top of a building and these big guys were attacking her. After I stopped the mugging, this happened. Thank you so much. You saved my life. Don't worry about it, lady. I gotta go. 
Wait, before you go, I lost my purse on one of the rooftops around here. On a different rooftop? Yes. Different from this one? Yes. Are you serious? Are you taking some kind of tour of city rooftops? Yes. Okay, whatever. I'll find your purse for you. Thank you. That was not edited. The scene is really that awkward. So this woman left her purse on a different rooftop than the one she's currently on. And now I gotta go find the purse. I bring it back and this happens. Here's your purse back. Thank you so much. This city could use more masked vigilantes like you. Uh, if you say so. Try to stay off rooftops from now on. A lot of gang members seem to hang out up here. I will. Thanks again. All that for... Literally nothing. That was a completely pointless side quest. I mean, stopping criminals from beating a woman to death and getting her purse back to her isn't pointless. I do that all the time in real life because it's just the right thing to do. But why was this here? There was no point to it in the grand scheme of things, and the game doesn't even reward you for doing it, and it never comes up again. I guess the moral of the story is that you shouldn't do the right thing to get rewarded. You should do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. But I mean, come on, can I at least get a trophy or something? After a bit, I took down all the thugs and finally found the big man himself. He's wearing sunglasses, and that's how you know he's the big man. He tells me where the murderer went to hide, so now I gotta go down to the dock, and that's the end of the level. Not a bad introduction to the overall gameplay, but it did feel a little vapid and repetitious. The combat system isn't terrible, and you can pull off some pretty fun combos to get rid of the enemies quickly. But on the easier difficulties, the most effective strategy is to just punch and kick over and over. And that's what I did. Yes, I'm playing this game on normal difficulty and not hard. Sure, that makes me a wuss. Correct, I am not an elite pro gamer. But I just don't care. I play Jedi Fallen Order on story mode because I couldn't beat the big woman with the double lightsaber. Sue me. Next level is in a warehouse and the game teaches you how to be stealthy. There are these little dark areas you can hide in and the criminals can't see you. Sounds like a fun mechanic, right? Well, don't bother trying to be stealthy because there reaches a point in the same level where you can't be stealthy anymore and the game expects you to go right back to beating up all the bad guys as you Usual. So why introduce stealth to the equation when you're going to completely ignore stealth in the second half of the level? I don't know, ask Bruce Campbell. <laughs> Unplug the machine and walk away. Next level, we're still in the warehouse, but after a bit of searching, we find the evil thug who killed Uncle Bob. And now we gotta beat him up. Except he's insanely overpowered. I'm not sure if the game accidentally switched me over to hard, but I could not for the life of me even get close to beating him. He's got bombs and guns, and I tried to avoid taking damage. But it was painfully obvious that I'm just not good enough at the game to defeat him. And guess what? There are no checkpoints in the level. So if you die, you have to go back to the very beginning and play through the pre-boss fight section again. It's not fair and I'm mad. So I decided to restart the entire game, this time setting it to the easiest difficulty. Yes, I'm playing this game on easy difficulty now. Sure, that makes me a wuss. Correct, I am not an elite pro gamer, but I still don't care. I had to look up a walkthrough for Putt Putt Goes to the Moon. Sue me. I finally beat the mugger and wouldn't you know it, it's the same guy Spider-Man let go at the wrestling place. If he had only stopped him when he had the chance, Uncle Brad would still be with us. But then the criminal falls out the window and is dead now. I know I haven't talked about the voice acting yet, but I gotta say, Tobey Maguire's voice acting in this game is incredibly entertaining. This is how my story begins. This is supposed to be the Skulls territory. I'll find Uncle Ben's killer if I have to go through every one of the Skulls to do it. Sounds like the police are closing in. Stop right there, murderer! Huh? I can't let anything stop me. I have to find a way to shut off the power so I can get through. I've taken a fuse out of the control panel. I don't have time for this. Why so scared? You were so brave when you shot a defenseless old man. I could have stopped you at the fight promoter's office. I could have saved Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben, nothing could ever fill the hole left when he died. Those wounds never really heal. The beautiful redhead is Mary Jane Watson. I didn't say it was good. I said it was entertaining. It's so obvious that this was just a paycheck for him, and he clearly phoned in every line. But I can't help but love it. The deadpan delivery of every single line in this game, contrasted to the dated visuals in both the pre-rendered and in-game cutscenes, makes for perfectly terribly hilarious moments that I could watch all day. Speaking of terrible voice acting, let's talk about Willem Dafoe now. That is a great pickup line. Willem Dafoe's performance as Norman the Green Goblin Osborn in Spider-Man the movie is truly iconic. It's so iconic 
ironic that Sony and the MCU just had to give Willem another shot at the Gobbler in No Way Home. But it turns out that William DeVoe is not a great voice actor. General Slocum has given Oscorp a week to prove that we can develop a working serum, or we are going to lose the contract to Quest Labs. Given how much we have invested in this research, losing the contract could bankrupt Oscorp. I can only assume that Spider-Man relates to our problem in some way. Do it. He's phoning it in just as much as Toby, but I still love it. It's cheesy, it's corny, and it's the perfect quality of voice acting for a movie tie-in game. Do it. So, it turns out that normal Ozymandias has created robots to track down Spider-Man to steal his blood, so they can perfect their evil super serum formula. We can modify the Hunter Killers to track this DNA signature and capture Spider-Man! Wait a minute, what are they, what are they called? Hunter Killers! What, whoa, 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 one more time, please? Hunter Killers! So, they're Hunter Killers... But don't they just need a sample of his blood? Why do the hunter killers need to capture spider guy in order to get a blood sample? Can't the hunter killers just be reprogrammed to take a swipe at Spider-Man enough to draw blood to use as a sample? Why are they called hunter killers in the first place? If their sole purpose is to both hunt and kill, why did anyone okay the building of these things? Did nobody question why Norman Osborn decided to build robots literally called hunter killers? Am I asking too many questions about something goofy that the developers clearly didn't care about enough to elaborate on and thus wasting precious time in this video ranting about this very unimportant detail in a 20 year old video game based on a Spider-Man movie? Ridiculous. Okay, so we went from tracking down an evil-hearted murderer and avenging Uncle Bruno's death to taking pictures of Spider-Man. Cool. Well, if I want to get paid this week, I'd better come up with some photos for Jonah. You gotta lock onto the balloons and hit them with Spider-Man's web. Intense gameplay! Ha, psych, that was just a tutorial on how to lock onto enemies mid-swing. Now we have to fight the hunter killers that Willem Dafoe is sending to attack us. And it's about as easy as popping the balloons. They just kind of shoot at you and you just don't, just don't get shot and then hit them. And that's, and that's that. Intense gameplay! Okay, that was one of the greatest levels in video game history, but sadly, we have to move on now. Before the next level, we get a cool pre-rendered cutscene that features Spider-Man running into the villain's Shocker and Vulture from the movie. Remember when they were in the movie? That one scene when Shocker was all like, I'm Shocker and I'm in this scene from Spider-Man the movie. And Vulture was all like, that was a pretty good scene. I really can't blame the game for adding in extra villains for Spider-Man to take on. The movie doesn't have enough action to fill out levels in a several hour long game, so it makes sense to throw in some extra villains to spice things up. Shocker breaks into a train station and his goons start attacking police officers and civilians. So it's up to Spider-Man to save them and be super cool. Then Shocker blows up a pillar and there's a dude just standing there completely oblivious to the fact that a pillar directly behind him is going to crush him to death. Yeah man, Spider-Man is like right here, right now. It's so crazy. Sir, watch hey, out. The hey, pillar is hey, about to fall phone. on you. I'm on the phone, Spider-Man. That's really rude of you. Anyway, like I was saying. Shocker escapes into the sewer because of course he does, and Spider-Man chases him. After tracking him down, Spider-Man and Shocker have a totally normal looking conversation. <laughs> Come on, freak. You need to learn a lesson, and Shocker's School of Hard Knocks is now open. Give me a break, Shock. I can't believe you have any class, let alone a whole school worth. Then we have a very epic and intense boss fight. In a second, you'll be nothing but a red smear and a memory. Wow, how'd they get away with that line in an E-rated game? Shocker sure is an intimidating villain. I wonder if he has anything else to say. In a second. Huh, guess not. Well, that was a quick fight. It's not like I have the game set to easy or anything. Shocker tells Spider-Man that Vulture, remember the bald green bird guy that was in like one cutscene earlier, has a secret workshop at the old clock tower on the Lower East Side. He had some workshops set up up in the old clock tower on the Lower East Side. So did Vulture tell Shocker about his secret workshop at the old clock tower on the Lower East Side? Hey Vulture, my dude, let's like go rob a bank, bro. Sure, let me just run and go grab some supplies at the old clock tower on the Lower East Side. That's where my workshop is. Cool. The next level is really fun. You climb up a clock tower from the inside while Vulture chucks grenades down at you. Note to self, scale Crazy Birdman's hideout from the outside next time. <laughs> 
When Spider-Man reaches the top, Vulture escapes. Man, if only I had scaled the clock tower from the outside instead. <laughs> the next level introduces a brand new level type called Follow the Bad Guy, and when he blows up nearby objects, repair them with your webbing. And it feels very tedious. The concept of this level sounds exciting, but it's just a bit too slow and feels more like busy work than a thrilling chase. Next up is another boss fight. This time you gotta swing around and hit Vulture midair until he loses control and lands on the building. It's a little more interesting than the Shocker fight, but it still feels kind of tedious. Come to think of it, this whole game has felt tedious to me. At the beginning, I was really enjoying the cheesy voice acting and the awkward character interactions, but as the game has gone on, it just feels like every level is the same. There's nothing fresh or different past the first four levels. In fact, each level just feels like another level in a different setting. Did that make sense? Should I rewrite that? Nah. Now I can add in a meta joke about my poor writing and people will think that's smart because I pointed out my personal flaws and self-awareness is funny. I am very bad at writing. <laughs> when he finally defeats Vulture, Spider-Man breaks the fourth wall. Now Vulture, you can't go around taking things that don't belong to you. What kind of example does it set for impressionable youngsters out there? Out of all the reasons he could have said stealing was wrong, he chose the don't be a bad influence on children reason? Good reason, Spider-Man. I'll be sure to steal when the children aren't looking. That's a joke, guys. I've never committed any serious crimes, ever. I would never commit a crime, ever. I would never run over 10 dogs and bury them in the woods. What would you... Why would you bring that up? Why would you ask me that? Thankfully, the next pre-rendered cutscene picks right back up on the Green Goblin plotline. I bet you forgot Willem Dafoe was in the game, didn't you? It turns out there's another person running around with mutant DNA like Spider-Man's, but it's not Miles Morales or some other Spider-Man. It's Scorpion. And he's purple. It looks like our pal Willie has run out of hunter killers, because now he's made these spider bots to hunt down and capture Scorpion. It's going to be weird going back to the subway station after my battle with Shocker. Spider-Man just so happens to be in the exact same place as Scorpion was attacked by these spider bots. So now Spider-Man and Scorpion team up to defeat these robots. It was fun to team up with Scorpion, but then this happened. So yeah, he's pretty much useless. I think it's really cool how you get to team up with Scorpion. I mean, taking a character who's usually seen as a villain in the Spider-Man canon and making him an ally is such a refreshing and unique change. What a bold and creative. And then Scorpion attacks Spider-Man. Mega corporations are taking over. You can't win. I mean, call me crazy, but it sounds to me like Scorpion's been spending a little bit too much time on Twitter. Hey future me, do that funny bit with the Seinfeld joke where I put the music and the laugh track. Do that again, that was funny. Please do that again. So Spider-Man defeats Scorpion, and we finally get back to the main plotline of the movie. The board can't fire me! I built this company, how dare they? We finally see the moment that Norman Osborn becomes the evil, the scary, the deranged, Green Gobbler. Too bad Peter had to work. Yeah. Uh... Who are these generic white people? Green Gobbler attacks the party and it's up to Spider-Man to save Mary Jane who somehow ended up on a floating panda bear for some reason and then put a stop to Green Gobbler's destruction. I know I've already commented on Willem Dafoe's phoned in delivery, but I've gotta say, when he becomes the Grobbler, he really goes all out and delivers a performance nearly equal to his iconic role in the movie. <laughs> me? I'm just a concerned citizen helping to clean up our fair city. Meeting you today is an onyx Expected bonus! You're boring me, Spider-Man! It's nice to see someone really committing to their role in the voice acting department. But then again, every other voice actor just phones it in. Are you alright? Yeah, thanks. You were great back there. Thanks. I have to go deal with, you know. Oh, yeah. Thanks again. No problem. Grab hold of a rogue balloon anytime. Rescuing damsels is my specialty. Go get him, tiger. <laughs> The Gobbler wreaks havoc, you stop him from wreaking havoc, then you fight him one-on-one -on -one in an incredibly unfair boss fight. Even on the easiest difficulty, I had a hard time beating him. No matter what I did, he would just occasionally grab me and throw me to the ground. If there hadn't been a health item nearby, I would have definitely died during this part of the level. It is the worst level I have ever played in any video game ever of all time. I am not exaggerating. You misguided fool! 
I Brothers, huh? You the world well, then I'm telling Mom. Grubler gets mad that Spider-Man refused to join his side. Well, Mr. Green Elf, maybe if you hadn't been trying to kill me for the past 10 minutes, I would have felt more inclined to join your stupid team. You know, I'm starting to get the feeling that very little thought was put into the storyline of this game. In fact, I have a strong feeling that this game was made only to advertise the movie and to get children to drag their parents to theaters to see it. But of course that's not true. That can't be true. Movie tie-in games have never been made merely for a quick buck or to advertise a movie, but to inspire, to lead, to empower. Movie tie-in games are the backbone of our society, of America, of the film industry, of freedom itself. Movie tie-in games are truly the greatest pieces of art in the history of anything ever. Throughout downtown, our bombs have planted, filled with a deadly gas. When they go off, well, use your imagination. <laughs> you might be able to stop them, or you can try to stop me. The choice is yours, hero. Ah. The Grobbler placed bombs all over the city that will unleash a deadly gas. He tells Spider-Man about the bombs, giving Spider-Man plenty of time to go and disarm them. The next mission, Spider-Man must travel around the city and turn off the bombs while the Hunter Killers attack him. Oh wait, so he still did have Hunter Killers. Alright, so why did you have the Spider-Bots? Wait, so you had the Spider-Bots, which were going after Scorpion, but the Hunter Killers, like, they had bombs and stuff, so why didn't he just have the Hunter Killers go after, like, Scorpion? Why didn't he have the Spider-Bots, like, go after Spider-Man? Because there are spiders also, so he'd probably have a harder, maybe have a harder time to fight them when he was fighting the Hunter Killers. It was pretty easy. It was just a couple webs. The spiders, they would be, literally, that would make more sense for Spider-Man, because then they can swing webs, too, and Spider-Man can swing webs, so then the, the Hunter kill. The spiders could also then could fight Spider-Man better than the- After Spider-Man stops all the bombs, he decides to hide from Grobbler, and Grobbler gets mad that he got away. Even though he used the bombs to distract Spider-Man so he could get away. Spidey finds an electronic thing on the ground and finds out it's from Oscorp. So he decides to visit the science lab and find out who Green Gobbler is. Okay, I forgot for a moment his name is actually Green Goblin. Like, I've read Gobbler so many times, I forgot that his name... <laughs> I, like, forgot, like, while recording this. His name is Green Goblin. I have been... Uh... This next mission is, in my opinion, the most unique and fun mission in the entire game. And it's a stealth level. Normally, I despise stealth levels in games. If it's done poorly, it just slows everything down and bores the player to death. But in a superhero game with finicky boss fights and bad controls, it's nice to just take it slow and easy and crawl around this office building looking for computers to find different sections of a code to get into the main part of the lab. If one of the Oscorp men see you or you step inside of a camera, an alarm starts to go off and these robot-looking dudes come to attack you. Although you can get away from them pretty easily because they're all kind of dumb. The next level is still a stealth level, but it's a lot more tedious. The scientist dude is all like, we've got chemical weapons here, please get rid of them. And Spider-Man is all like, all right, cool. And then you've got to go to these different rooms to turn off the chemical weapon things without being seen. And if you get seen, the robot dudes come back and it's just very tedious. By the time I finished the level, I was tired of the stealth mechanic and hoped that the next level would involve a big robot guy that I had to blow up. In the next level, you blow up a big robot robot guy. So it's another boss fight. You have to destroy 10 generators on the giant robot so you can leave. It's not very fun and I spent four minutes looking for two of the generators, but at least it's better than the other boss fights. They're all just like punch, punch, jump, run away, punch, jump. It's just, it's just better. Okay. It's just more unique. I don't know. I'm starting to actually get really tired of this. I'm starting to get really tired of this, this whole Spider-Man thing. This whole game's pretty it's been going on a long time. For some reason, the audio on this part of the footage glitched out, so let me just dub over what Spider-Man says during the cutscenes here. Iron Giant is dead now. Yay, I'm Spider-Man. Wowie zowie, I wonder what Mr. Green Gobbler keeps in his office. Oh no, a picture of a woman. Ah. You find all the robot dudes and escape Oscorp. It's so epic and fun, and let's just skip through all this. I'm really tired of this game. I want it to be over. Spider-Man has to chase Gob Greenler because he stole Mary Jane, who is kind of Peter's girlfriend, but not really. I don't know. I didn't read the manga, so I had a hard time time following this part. And after you chase the Grobbler down, you gotta save Mary Jane from the burning bridge and beat up Grobbler green guy in a boss fight that is awesome and fun. Grobbler Gurn takes off his mask and Spider-Man is shocked to find out that he is actually famous celebrity Willem Dafoe, just like in the movie. Also just like in the movie, Willem Grand Dafoe Griebler is hit by his own glider and is knocked to the ground a few feet backwards and he gets dead. Tell Harry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. 
Mary Jane, there's something I have to tell you. I... I know, Tiger. You don't have to say. Yeah, that's my life. Wait, 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 wait. That's your life? Your best friend's dad is lying on the ground dead. The Brooklyn Bridge in New York City is on fire and the girl of your dreams is kissing you with your mask on. That is your life. Yeah, fair enough. That's a pretty cool life. So that was Spider-Man the movie, the game. And it wasn't great. To be fair, a lot of the dialogue in the game was a lot of fun to listen to. Like, the voice acting was bad. Just the script writing was really bad. Like, I thought just the dialogue was funny, right? The cutscenes, they're ancient looking compared to what we have nowadays. And they're, they're entertaining. It's entertaining, right? But the game has a lot of issues uh, with the gameplay and each level. Just, just a lot of issues with the game. Even though the gameplay wasn't great, I still had some fun moments. <laughs> Who's that? Whew, now that that's over with, I can start playing some games in my backlog, like... Uh... Kingdom Hearts. Or... Uh... For... I already played that one. Uh... Guardians of the Galaxy, or I'm kidding. I'm not gonna play the next Spider-Man game. That'd be dumb. I don't want to do that. I want to do whatever I want. I mean, who even needs video games? I don't need them. I don't need video games. I'm done with video games. I'm not gonna any play. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play any more video games. I'm not gonna. Video games are dumb. I wanna play Veggie Tales game.